Hey guys, this is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a sort of walkthrough tip, series of uh, guides, basically, on how to use one of the coolest features in Reason, the Combinator. I think this is a really underused tool, myself included, um, but the Combinator is a powerhouse of the Reason rig, and I don't think any of us, or most of us, are giving it enough credit. So I wanted to do a video today to walk you through why you should be using the Combinator a lot more um, and how you can make your songs to sound better, faster, easier, speed up your workflow with the help of the Combinator. So let's jump in. So I've created a Combinator here. There's nothing in it. I just right clicked. It's under the Utilities Combinator. And I just put in a little bit of MIDI data just so we'll have something to listen to while we play. Um, so. Then what you do, basically what the Combinator is, is a rack within a rack, and you can put multiple instruments and effects into it. Then using these knobs and these buttons, you can control certain parameters, multiple parameters even, um, with one knob or one button, so you can quickly um, and more organically tweak your sound which is great for not only live playing, but also for recording. Um, for example, if you want to have the filter going up and the resonance going down in opposite directions, or if you want to change the way the tone of a, like, a synth in the chorus versus the verse, you could have a bunch of effects on bypass and turn them on just like a guitar stomp box. Um, the Combinator is also super powerful because uh, the programmer will let you access and modulate parameters in Reason that aren't normally accessible via CV voltage. Um, there's no other way to modulate them or automate them. Well, to, there's not an easy way to modulate them uh, aside from drawing in automation, and the Combinator will let you do that. And the third, and probably one of the most powerful things about the Combinator, is it's a way of saving full patches. So you can put both an instrument and the effects you want into the combinator and then go here to save it and that will be saved and you can open it up in another song so you can have your go-to presets and help craft your own sound it'll save a lot of time and it'll help you keep your best ideas all in one place um, so before we dig into how to do these three things with the combinator i just want to invite you to First of all, leave a comment if you've got any other cool uses of the Combinator, um, or if I've missed something about how to use it, um, be sure to drop it by. And if there's any questions that I don't answer, be sure to leave those down below in the comments as well. Um, and if you dig this, and if you want to know more about Reason, um, or about licensing music, or writing good music, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All right, so let's dig in. So the first thing we're going to do is insert an instrument. We'll just do, we'll do a Europa, sure, the default patch. We'll just, uh, that's a little annoying. So we'll do, um, I think this is pretty gentle. And we'll slow down the tempo just so it doesn't drive us crazy. Okay, cool. So what it sounds like doesn't matter for the purposes of this demo. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a flanger and we'll create a, we'll create another one of these half rack units here. Um, yeah, we'll do the filter, sure. Um, so now that we've got these two in place, what we can do is go to the programmer here. You'll notice in the programmer that there are um, all the instruments that we've inserted and effects are listed here in descending order. Um, here you can map them to certain keys. So like if you wanted one uh, instrument to sound low and another to sound high or spread it or layer them. For example, you know, you could have like trombones on the low side and trumpets on your right hand or something like that. And you can have a crossover point um, and a lot of other fun things with it. Um, here you have the ability to control the parameters. So what I want to do is go to 
rotary one, which is this knob here, um, and the target on the flanger is going to be the feedback amount. And you can send it the minimum and the maximum. So now if we were to adjust this, you'll see right here the feedback amount is moving on the flanger. So let's... Um, so that's fun, but we can do way more fun stuff. So let's go to the uh, rotary one again, yeah, and we'll do, we're on the filter now, the envelope controlled filter, and we're going to do the frequency here. Um, and then we're going to go rotary one again, and we're going to do um, the resonance, but we're going to do... Um, Actually, let's um, have rotary this one be. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do is we won't do anything here, um, or just no target here. But let's watch this. Um. So this can quickly be helpful, especially as we now start to go to, let's also map rotary one to, um, these are some of the features of the Europa synth here, right? So let's do it to, um, I guess the filter drive here, sure, I don't, And then we can route rotary two. So let's say. Oh, where's delay time? delay you'd see. And then for kicks we can um I will turn the, we'll use button one. Uh, so we want to map button one to go to the effects section and we'll do distortion on or off so I just want to show you the way it looks here uh, right now distortion is off but if you push down button one right now is not to make a good sound but just to show you that for example what we could also do to button one we can map the flanger to button one and um, the and with this you have to um, check that the minimum value is one this is a big tip pay attention with these effects bypass Zero, there's a value here between one, or zero and two. Zero is off, and if it's off, then no sound flows through it and it meets the channel. So what you wanna do is set it to one and two. So when it's on, when it's pressed in, it's bypassed. When it's pressed out, it's on. So this can be really helpful, you know, for like I said, uh, if you want a chorus of a song to sound different, radically different for a song. You can have it augmented. And we get to the chorus and it wonderfully sounds like. And it doesn't just stop there though, because what you can also do now is use another utility like um, 
a matrix pattern sequencer or another LFO. So we're going to take Pulsar here. I'm going to hit tab to flip things around. Use the CV out uh, of the Pulsar to go into the CV in of the combinator here, CV1. And so what I'm going to do, the, the, it's making this a sine wave like this. Good, and bigger and smaller. So what we're going to do is on the chorus, sure, um, we're going to route CV input 1 to delay. And so you can see now that this is automatically moving in time to the LFO. We can make it bigger. So. And we're getting to the chorus, yeah. Yeah! Woo! Um, so it's super powerful as you start to layer all of these things together. You can also control with the pitch wheel. Um, wood control. Um, you can also bypass everything if you want. And if you've got a pattern device like a redrum or a Thor that runs a pattern in it, you hit this button and all the patterns will run. And like I said, hit save when you get a patch you like, store it somewhere, you can find it easily, and it'll be there when you need it. Um, also, you can rename, you know, these things like uh, filter so that you can figure out what they do next time really quickly. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you're going to start experimenting with the uh, combinator, and I hope you enjoyed this. If I left anything out, don't forget to let me know in the comments, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.